Hello, I'm Pratish and today I want to talk to you about Kunal Kemu's directorial debut, Madgao Express. When the balls are kicked, the sound made is of eggs being cracked. When fake breasts on men press up against each other by mistake, we hear a squeaking toy in the score. The body is a sight of easy humour in Kunal Kemu's male romp directorial debut, Madgao Express where laughter is located in a chandelier falling straight on someone's head, where an accident makes someone in the backseat leap right through the windshield in one clean motion, where the recoil of a gun makes a woman jump 10 feet back in the air. Body horror as body humour, here a finger being sliced on a machete is part of the bevy of jokes this film has up its sleeve. To look at someone in pain and seek humour is a tradition that goes way back to burlesque and Charlie Chaplin that can be seen today in Mr. Bean, Tom and Jerry and even America's funniest home videos. Why do we laugh when someone trips over a banana peel? Perhaps it's the suddenness of it, the exaggerated expression on the face and psychologically speaking, the relief that this did not happen to us. Then why do we not laugh when two fake breasts are pressed up against each other? Perhaps because we are no longer in a state of arrested development. To find men dressed as women funny is to be attached to a conservative idea that men and women are to be seen dressed in a certain restricted, limiting way. Why are we supposed to laugh at two sex workers, hookers as the men, sorry, boys say? Why is a poor mother holding her infant while shouting at her other son who flings a vada pav in anger thought of as a passing image of comic lift? The film thinks this is cool and this is the hoodwink of the film because it is instead quite conservative and no drug-addled, trippy cinematography, women gunning down men in silk saris or erotic wordplay, accident porn as accident prone, can convince you otherwise. Old wine in a spanking new bottle is still old wine. Ayush played by Avinash Tiwari, Pinky played by Prateek Gandhi and Dodo played by Divyendu Sharma are childhood friends who have always harboured the wish to go to Goa together. But as most Goa trips go, dreamt but not destined, they keep failing. When they finally do succeed as adults and end up in Goa, they wish they had failed. Because in the strange bag swap in the Lokmani Tilak train station, they are handed a bag with gun, cash and a key to a room. They should throw it away and move on with their trip, except Dodo is cash strapped, something his friends don't know, and so he keeps the cash and the keys to the hotel room. When the three friends end up in that room after a trippy night, they discover cocaine under the bed. It's too late now. They're caught in a turf war of drug cartels in Goa. On the one hand is Kanchan Komedi and her army of women with guns tucked in their navaris, wearing nathanis and sneakers. On the other hand is Mendoza, pronounced as Mandolin, Mangola, Mandakini. He is Kanchan's ex-husband. These characters pop up as strange apparitions whose physicality and Marathi sass coat the film in tickling wit. It's these dialogues dripping in anger that rip through the film in peals of laughter. Then there is a fringed Nora at the fringes of the story, pushing the proceedings in her odd acrobatic ways. The film as it begins is narrated by Dodo. Why? Because he is the least sorted of the three and thus most capable of an arc. While Ayush is in New York and Pinky is in Cape Town, both making money, moving ahead, marching to the drums of adulthood, Dodo is stuck in Mumbai, delivering pizza, getting fired, Green screening photos alongside Salman Khan, Farhan Akhtar, Anurag Kashyap, the Everest base camp and a penthouse to fake a life online. It is this fake life that his friends trust and come to Mumbai to see him, only to be taken to Goa in a three-tier non-AC train. The film throws this first-person narration by the wayside when Dodo's loneliness is no longer essential to the story. The film treats him exactly the same way his friends did. There's something fundamentally unbelievable about the film's central friendship. Why are these three friends except for the fact that the cinema taught us that these three oddballs belong together? The sensitive mama's boy, the confident alpha, the court jester. This friendship has certainly not thickened over time. When they meet, it isn't like old friends trying to find the rhythm of older times, but distant cousins trying to ward off the hug of an excessively tactile relative. Right off the bat, the film stumbles. There's no nostalgia in their speech, no joust in their jibes. It's only when they speak of their respective loves that this friendship expresses itself as happiness for the other. Look at the face Ayush makes when he hears about Pinky's lover, one of pride and hope on his behalf. But this love is a strange thing. Ayush is in love with a woman he has never met, only chatted with for a year. And the only thing we know about Pinky's lover is that she is a Muslim. And the film never lets us see more, not even her face when she's present. 
the only Muslim character on screen on whose Islam the joke is made and she isn't given the dignity of her face. The film actively makes sure we don't see her face through staging and angles. She is the punchline to a joke and punchlines are never explained. While both Avinash Tiwari and Devendu bring their dependable craft to the character, soaring with it, limited by it, it is Pratik Gandhi who stands out in a guju-stained performance that takes jokes on his dark circles in its stride, where the face becomes a site of exaggeration, the thus minute ka Rambo that he becomes when he's dunked into a bed of cocaine. I love Goa. It takes a while to settle into his habits, all that pill popping and hypochondriac sanitizing, because it's such a stock caricature, impenetrable to any traces of humanity. It might be that his character's arc is the most swinging of the three. It's only when his character lets loose that you see Prateek Gandhi's gleaming comic presence. There's a lovely shot where Nora's character, Tasha and Dodo are talking and Pinky is on the side, awkwardly trying to get out of his blouse. As the camera keeps getting closer to Dodo and Tasha, Pinky is slowly shoved outside the screen and you can hear the laughter in the room dim out. Since this is an Excel production, the product placement is actually a litany of references from films past. Dil Chata Hai, Dawn, Lakshya, Honeymoon Travels. The cultural vocabulary of the film is as limited as the world, set in the pre-demonetization cash economy. There's almost a nostalgia for those 100 rupee notes, which actually looked like currency. When Pinky sees the bag with all the cash, he initially mistakes it for monopoly money. If only he waited a year more, I wonder what he would have to say. Let me know your thoughts on Madgao Express in the comments, your thoughts on my thoughts on Madgao Express, and if you like such videos, do subscribe to Film Companion Reviews. Screen पर कहानी कहने का जो craft है, वो बहुत पेचीदा है, और उसे सीखने के लिए आपको सालों साल मेहनत करने की ज़रूरत है। आप एक film school जा सकते हैं, जहाँ screen writing सिखाई जाती हो, या फिर आप खुद अपने घर पर बैठकर screen writing सीख सकते हैं। तो चलिए शुरू करते हैं स्क्रिप्ट राइटिंग का ये खूबसूरत सा अनूठा सा कोर्स जो फिल्म कंपेनियन क्लासरूम की तरफ से मैं आपके लिए लेकर आया हूं ताकि आप जानें समझें और सीखें कि फिल्म राइटिंग करते कैसे हैं